Yep, there's nothing wrong with that asphalt except for the dimple that was made by the dumpster. Okay. So um, now everybody tells me that you got to rejuvenate this. Yes, sir. Is this a point at which you do that, or? Yeah, this is a great time to rejuvenate. Rejuvenate will add the oils and maltines that were lost due to the oxidization. You can see where this asphalt's grayer. Yeah. And this is black. This has still got all the existing oil. This asphalt's already brought back the oil because I've raked it. But you really want to make sure you hit the picture frame. And it doesn't hurt to add extra CRF into my mixture. So I'll do that right now. All right. And what is the general rule for putting in a rejuvenator? Well, we use the CRF. And uh, we recommend a good stainless steel sprayer. And it's about one-tenth of a gallon per the area. Yeah, per square yard. So you see I'm hitting a picture frame or perimeter. Now I'll go ahead and add some into my patch. And that stuff cooks right right in there, eh? Oh, absolutely. It, it, it'll suck right in. And again, I can't emphasize the importance of a good quality uh, steel sprayer. Those uh, plastic ones just won't last. This looks like a plug for Chapin sprayers, stainless steel sprayers. <laughs> well, it's what we've been using. So now, now you're just going to loot uh, in the mix and make it nice, eh? Yes, sir. We didn't have any asphalt with us today, but... Uh, We'll do the best that we got. We only had a little dimple to take care of. Yeah. Now, why do guys get uh, raveling since we're doing this? Is it? Can you go expound a little bit on that? Well, if you kind of take a look at this, and I don't know how well you can zoom in over here, this part of the repair, there's a lot of the fine asphalt. Yeah, I see the this fines. this part, you have a lot of the bones, as we call it, or yep, the, the rock aggregate. If you leave that on there and try to compact it, you don't have enough of the fine material to bond it and hold the patch together. Oh, okay. So, uh, this is not what you want to see before you compact it. Now, I understand that if you don't get plenty of depth, it'll do the same thing as well. Absolutely. So basically, all our machine does is heat asphalt. The rest is up to uh, yep. a good rake and loot man. That's it. Sorry about my shadow, guys. Now, what's the uh, what's the disadvantage of working on such cold days? Uh, your asphalt cools off a little bit quicker, obviously. Yeah. Uh, the wind and the cool air has a disadvantage, but really, with infrared, uh, as long as you're not having a downpouring rain or a snowstorm. You should be able to go on out and do any type of repair that you need to. Cool. Now I see you're pulling off all that rock that you were talking about so you get a nice tight bind. Yeah. yeah. And I'm still trying to get some of the, the fine mix because I didn't have aspirin with me, but we'll get it. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you folks can see out there, he's pulling all the rock off and, and getting a nice, nice tight tight bind here. It's kind of sanding it in because I don't have any of the mixture. You know what? This sounds more like a uh, it, it's more like an art than it is a science. I mean really if you look at it you got to be good at looting and, uh, and raking. Because basically, like we were saying, that machine, all it's doing is heating the asphalt up. Boy, that's pretty. So, uh, now that you got that all prepped, I guess we go over to the... Uh, Tell me a little bit about that real quick. Well, this happens to be our plate compactor that we use. Uh, I really like this one. It has a detachable water tank. So if you forget to take a bucket on the job site, you take this right to your water. Oh, okay. You always have to use water whenever you're compacting asphalt. Also, you need a plate compactor that has an asphalt plate on it. It's not just your average mill plate compactor for compacting sand. 
these sides are actually rolled for the asphalt. Okay, I can see that right there. All right, very good. Let's get her going. Okay, so you're going to go all the way around the outside and pinch it? Yeah, I'm going to go all the way around. It's also another important step is not to turn on your asphalt patch. Go through your repair, come outside and go through it. Because if you try to twist on your repair, you're going to end up gouging the asphalt and having to re-rake it. And sometimes you might have to reheat it. Oh, cool. So Kurt, can you come over here and explain a little bit more about the repair? Um, it looks like it's almost like a saw cut, but uh, we got a hot to hot bond, right? Absolutely, we have a hot to hot bond. Again, you can see a little bit where I sprayed the CRF over here to picture frame it, but it looks nice and straight. Nice, square. fine, yeah. And uh, it's a, this is thermally bonded together. Unlike if you were to do a saw cut, remove, uh, you would have your hot asphalt that you just suck removed and put new in, but you'd have cold asphalt along the side, leaving that area in a straight wall. Hey? In a straight wall, um, susceptible for water moisture penetration, which will uh, affect the base material when water penetrates down through. So, do you recommend any other tools that we haven't seen today? I mean, uh, what uh, else would the guy need to get into the business? He would uh, definitely need to get into an asphalt hot box. Uh, we have our trailer version over here, and uh, we do recommend uh, uh, always having hot asphalt at your fingertips anytime you're doing any type of asphalt repair. Well, this has been really educational, and uh, I appreciate your time, and uh, we're going to take a quick shot of the uh, KM8000T. I know this is just a demo video for the, uh, the LB216. That's a really sweet looking trailer. Uh, complete with an infrared on the front there and uh, it has a hoist avit and winch on the front, tool rack, solvent tank, it's got the lights and beacons and everything. Well, Again, thanks a lot Kurt. Uh, this is Cliff Cameron and Kurt Schwartz. Uh, Have a great we're day. off. Take care. Good Give us a call. Give us a call. KM Infrared at 800-492-1757. Thanks and have a great day. Peace out.